In Jefferson, Texas recently, Welcome, everyone. A group of like-minded, or should we say like-obsessed people, He claimed that this creature was actually clawing at his car, gathered to swap stories of strange sightings. Reaction, I've seen it first. Mysterious animals. You know, they just found that mouse in Africa that yes. sheds its skin. It's amazing. You know? And elusive creatures lurking in the deep woods. You saw a big furry oh. creature. <laughs> It was huge. The baby of Boggy Creek. (laughs) There's a name for it. No, a scientific name. Cryptozoology. Lauren Coleman explains. Crypto means hidden. Zo means animals. Oology means the study of. Study of. The study of hidden or unknown animals. Which sounds very academic until you realize that those hidden animals include the Yeti, better known as the abominable snowman. The Loch Ness Monster. And the favorite obsession of this cryptozoology conference, Bigfoot also known as Sasquatch. It's fun. Whether or not it's science, I, you know, it's hard to say. For scientist David Nixon, his fascination with cryptozoology is a guilty pleasure. This is not exactly the kind of thing I talk about at work. This part of East Texas, it turns out, is a hot spot of Bigfoot activity. <laughs> The legend of Boggy Creek, which claimed to be based on real Bigfoot sightings, was filmed just an hour north of here. It terrified teenagers across the country in 1972. It was the first movie I'd seen in the theater where I felt like if I walked out of the theater at night, I could encounter the the screen monster I'd seen. For David Coleman, that first encounter with Bigfoot inspired a lifetime of tracking him down on the big... And you understand me? ...and little screen. It never hurts to ask. He's he's America's monster. So he's a shared cultural icon, even if he's real or not. These days... There is something standing right there. America's Monster has inspired an avalanche of cable TV reality shows. It's absolutely real. And testimonials on the internet. You just see it kind of walking, and it almost like looks at the camera just... There they are. A whole army of Bigfoot hunters. And this is the big toe. Like Bill Brock has taken to the woods, hoping to catch a glimpse of the beast, or at least one of his giant footprints. When did you cast this? We cast this night before, actually last night. Last night is when we cast it. I found it night before last. And it was a swampy area? Oh, extremely swampy, yeah. Future cryptozoologist Aidan Myers was enthralled. I am a big fan of cryptozoology, but I've never found something like this. I want to see a Bigfoot so badly, and it was so badly that I, you know, I made a movie about it. Director Eduardo Sanchez's first movie, The Blair Witch Project. Come on! I hear him down! became an instant horror classic. Now he's making a movie about Bigfoot. Shut up about a Sasquatch. For Sanchez and producer Mark Ordesky, Bigfoot has been a lifelong obsession. There's just something about it being just out of reach, but not being able to actually see it, that it's just like, it's like this, this, this quest. A quest that goes ever onward. They believe Bigfoot deserves more respect. Hey, you want a ride? It's okay. <laughs> Bigfoot's been kind of, of a joke lately, you know? He's in the commercials, and, and I, even though I love that humor, I always feel like, man, I wish somebody would make a film that made Bigfoot scary again. These are actual cast of Bigfoot. Lauren Coleman thinks the whole field of cryptozoology deserves more respect. A lot of people would like to uh, put it in some kind of category of pseudoscience, and we really reject that. This is what we call our little Bigfoot. He founded the world's only cryptozoology museum in Portland, Maine. Its logo is a strange-looking fish called a coelacanth. It was thought to be extinct for 65 million years until one was found in 1938.
It's a living fossil, and actually the word living fossil is first associated with this fish. So do you believe in Bigfoot? I'm very careful about the use of the word belief. Belief and believe is really the providence of religion. Mm -hmm. As a scientist, as an investigative journalist, I'm very much interested in looking at the evidence and accepting or denying that. This is the gold standard, sort of the Zabruder film of cryptozoology. Right. This film, shot in Bluff Creek, California in 1967, has been analyzed by cryptozoologists using the latest technology. If you look right here, mm -hmm. that is actually the, her calf muscle tightening up. Okay. If that was a costume, it would look like my pant leg. A frame-by-frame -frame analysis of this film has shown actual muscle movement mm -hmm. underneath the hair. And it's true that Western science has been wrong before. Coleman points to the giant squid, once dismissed as a mythological creature called the Kraken, until they started washing up on shore in the 1800s. The giant panda was believed to be some weird mutation until Ruth Harkness went to China and brought one back alive in 1936. The fur-bearing trout. Some this people, is fake. This is definitely <laughs> fake. And, and though there are plenty of hoaxes out there. Of course, the jackalope. This is the jackalope. And above it is the Wuffentinger, oh. which is a Bavarian Alps A bunny version. with wings. Right. Lauren Coleman says there are still many mysteries yet to be explained. So green represents Bigfoot, Bigfoot Sasquatch. Right. How is it that we haven't seen Nessie, or found Bigfoot, or... Maybe you haven't, but lots of people have. Author Lyle Blackburn says it doesn't really matter to him if Bigfoot exists or not. You don't have to believe in Bigfoot. It's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of believing that there is some mystery left in the world, you know, even in your own backyard, you know.